you know, you just got to say amen to the ladies. Thank you very much, ladies. Just a couple of quick announcements. August 3, which is coming fast, is our carnival out back. Um, it's like 11 to 2, 11 to 3, you know, uh, depends on the heat, how long we're going to be out there. You know? <laughs> but anyways, um, we are running short on pop-up tents. We want to try to cover as many of our workers and as many of our events and tents as we can. We're going to need about 10 tents. So if you have a tent laying around that we can borrow for that day, please see either Dave, Cindy, Barb, or me, and we'll take care of that. Also, there's a box out back for school supplies. If you want to donate some school supplies to the carnival, please feel free to add some into that box, and we hand those out to the kids while they're here. We also need volunteers, always need volunteers. So if you want to help, there again, let me, Barb, Cindy, or Dave know. We'd appreciate that. Um, then we're going to go on here to... Uh, she's in the hospital with some sort of a heart problem. Um, she did stay overnight. They are going to do a echocardiogram today sometime. So make sure you keep Nancy in your prayers. One of our members, former members, I guess once you remember, you're always a member here, um, has been diagnosed with multiple melanoma, minoma. Um, so we want to make sure we keep peace in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Well, it's a special day for many reasons today, but another one that's special is we're welcoming a new member today. Martha Corhorn is with us today, and I, I, I imagine those must be some of your family sitting with you, Martha. So we're going to, after the service, welcome her, but it's also her 90th birthday was just this past week, right? Yes, so she's getting a celebration with the cake and everything else. So. Martha, welcome to, officially welcome, and she comes from Princeton CRC over to here, so we're glad you're with us. Great to be here today and worship our God together. <laughs> we're going to praise the God, our God in a moment with a lot of music, and these are the words of the psalmist. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's do that together right now. You're coming up here to lead the singing, aren't you? Oh, I'm going to guess I'm going to give a greeting first. Am I going to do it in that order today? We keep changing the order on me. You surprise me, you know. So I'll stand up for God's greeting then. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God has greeted us. Let's take a few moments to greet each other. Hey, welcome to God's family room. Wow, what a morning. Good to have you all with us this morning. We're going to sing some wonderful songs about our relationship to each other and our relationship to God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell.
What a great privilege it is to be part of the family of God, to know that we are together with people that love Jesus Christ and love each other. So it's great to be here today to worship our God. Uh, please respond in the appropriate place as we go through the affirmation of faith. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Let's sing in response, Oh, how he loves you and me. Let's take this time to pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, for the love you have shown to us through Jesus Christ, our hearts rise before you along with our voices and exalt your name. What a glorious and amazing God you are. You have rescued us when we were hopelessly lost in our sins, when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. You raised us to new life in Jesus Christ. And for this we praise you now and always. You are worthy of all of our praise. We thank you today that we can come here and celebrate the Lord's Supper together, that we can be reminded that all of our sins are forgiven because of Jesus' sacrifice for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And all of life is in your hand even when we can't even see it and don't understand what's happening. It's in your hand, and we are in your hands. And so we thank and praise you for that. We thank and praise you today that we can have Martha Corhorn with us as a new member, that she has celebrated 90 years and that you have blessed her. Thank you that she could be here today with some of her family. Uh, fill us all with your encouragement and grace as we celebrate together. Sometimes, though, it's not easy to go through life. We had the announcement about who's in the hospital, and certainly she's concerned, and why is she weak, and why are there problems, and what will the test show? You have created her, you know her, and we pray that you'll sustain her and encourage her along the way, and that she can be restored again and worship with us. We pray, too, for and we know, Father, that 
These last weeks have been very difficult for them, the separation, the plans that have to be made, uh, the difficulties that they face. Father, will you enfold them as only you can, especially through your people, that they will know your goodness and grace. Be near to them. Be near to them. I was anticipating a surgery coming up. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the testing and everything else will permit her to go through this process and that it will be effective and healing. And Father, there's certainly others that I haven't mentioned, but you know them. You know them by name. You know their needs, whether it's upcoming surgeries or whether it's something else that's happening in their lives. You know these things, and you care about them deeply. You love us deeply. And so, Father, uphold anyone who has a special need today. Father, we're grateful that we can come here. We're grateful that we can be in this country, this marvelous country that you've given us. What a glorious country it is and what great freedoms we have that we can be here to worship you and we can exalt your name. Father, we pray that the people in our country will act in responsib and responsible and reasonable ways. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that the words of their mouths will not motivate people to do something harmful, but their words will motivate people to hope and they will lead them in a way that good leaders do. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our country and all the people who are in leadership positions. We pray for them, whether they're police officers or firemen or in the armed services or in every other branch of government. We pray that you'll give them wisdom and we pray that you'll give them faith in you. For many who lead our country don't believe in Jesus Christ, and we pray that they will come to know him and trust in him. Father, we are thankful for this time of year also. What a glorious time summer is when we can make trips where we can enjoy people that we haven't seen in a long time, where we can travel to beautiful places of the country, where we can enjoy the warmth and the goodness that you give. Thank you as we look around your creation that you've sent adequate rain to our area and it certainly is lush and we are thankful for that. Father, we want to exalt you in every way. May your name always be praised. Thank you again that you called us here today and that you have called us your people. May your name always be exalted. We pray this in the name of Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Whenever I think of how much God has loved me, the gifts that I give in offerings are way too puny compared to what he has done. But nevertheless, he takes those gifts and he uses them for his kingdom and his causes. And right now we're going to give our offerings. The first is for the general fund. The second is for benevolence. And then we do what we call a noisy offering. And we use that offering to supply chickens and sunflower seeds for the Esther School in Zambia. So that offering will be taken right now.
sing and praise our God by singing, Hey Zoo, Hey Zoo, fill us with your love. I know those that worship here with us all the time know that we're studying the book of Thessalonians, the first book of Thessalonians together. We're in chapter 4, and it's been a real joy for me to make sermons uh, from these various passages as we go through the book together. I, I just i am amazed always at the continuity, continuity of the Apostle Paul's thought how he strings things together, how he comes back to some things he's talked about before. And today, we're going to focus on one of the three great things that he talked about in the beginning when he talked about faith, love, and hope. And we're going to go back to love. So these are the words of God, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 9. Now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia, yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. This is the word of the Lord. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 said these words. He said, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Today we're going to look at the greatest of those three wonderful things that the Apostle Paul often talks about. Love is the greatest for this reason, for sure, as he says in 1 Corinthians 13, love is great because it never fails. It never, ever fails. Everything else may fail, everything else may pass away, but love never, ever fails. Love is the greatest because God himself is love. When we love, we act like God, for God is love. That's almost the only time in the Bible we are told God is one particular thing, love. We're also told God is just, but more often we're told God is love. So that's why it's the greatest, because God is love. 
Faith will become sight. Hope will be realized, but the love of God and Jesus Christ will endure forever. That's why it's the greatest. Those others will be concluded in a way, but not love. Jesus demonstrated the greatest love of all, of course, when he gave his life for us. Not when we, when we were worthy, but to make us worthy. Not when we were right with God at all, because we were enemies of God. He demonstrated his love to us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's incredible love. And that's the love that we ought to have. Jesus' love for us calls us to be people who live and act in love as he did. And so he talks to the people in Thessalonica and tells them about love. Now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God. I've only been here since the beginning of May, but... For me, I, I could say these words without hesitation to you. I mean, I, even this morning, couldn't you just feel the love in this room, the concern for each other as people walked around, as people, you know, it's like we can't even, Carol is waiting over there to play, and it's like, uh, okay, we've got to end this sometime, you know, but it, it, because we love each other and we're glad to see each other, and there's hugs and there's concern and there's real caring for people. So the Apostle Paul writes this to the Thessalonians, not because they didn't love, because they did. They were very good at it. They were excellent. They had brotherly love. Now, that word, brotherly love, is two words put together. It's philos, which is one word for love, and delphia, which is brothers. So guess what the city Philadelphia means. It means the city of brotherly love. Maybe you knew that already. Probably did. But that's the first love that he talks about here. He talks about it and is translated as brotherly love. We don't need to write to you about that. We don't need to tell you about that because you're doing it. Because the church is indeed your true family. Now your sons, your daughters, your mother, your father, Grandpa and Grandma, they're, they're your family. But this is your eternal family. This is the family of God. This is where brotherly love is extended in a way that often doesn't even happen in families because this is the family of God. Here we gather together in brotherly love because we are God's family. But they were also taught by God to love each other. And then we meet another word for love. It's not Philadelphia anymore. Now it's agape. Agape love is sacrificial love. Agape love gives itself for someone else. It is the highest type of love that anyone could imagine. And Jesus Christ, of course, demonstrated this love most perfectly and demonstrates it most perfectly every day of our lives. Because God is love. God is agape type of love. God gives his one and only son to rescue us. So they taught this church about agape love. They taught them how to love each other in a sacrificial love, agape love. And those two things together are powerful. When you have brotherly love, that family atmosphere where everybody loves each other and cares about each other, and then you add to that agape love where you're willing to give up everything for someone else. That's the type of love he wants. And they had that kind of love. All over Macedonia, they knew that. Now, that was the northern part of Greece, and he had been to Philippi first, and then he came over to Thessalonica. But all over that area, they knew that this was a church that loved. 
This was their reputation. They were a church of love. It wasn't just in the church, it was all around. They loved other believers also as brothers in Christ. They were really a good church. Earlier on, when he talked about living a holy life, he tells them to do it more and more. And now he says the same thing. You know, he's not saying you're not doing it to the Thessalonians. They are doing it. He says, do it more and more. Do it more and more. And that's our call today, too. You love each other. Yes, you do. Do it more and more. You cannot stop building on the love that already exists because that's what God is like. God is a God of love, and it never changes. So do it more and more. Today is a call for us to do what we do naturally and to do it more and more. Well, there's three things uh, that you should do if you really love. And the first of these is to lead a quiet life. He says, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. Love does not demand to be noticed. Love is peaceful. Love is kind. In fact, in that chapter of 1 Corinthians, we're told that about love, that it's kind. And we're to be that way. We're to lead a quiet life. We shouldn't be troublemakers in any way because that's not love. Love doesn't make trouble. Love makes peace. Peace with fellow believers and peace with people around us. Lead a quiet life. Your neighbors should watch you and observe the quiet, peaceful life that you're leading. Make your ambition to lead a quiet life and to mind your own business. Love doesn't stick its nose in where it doesn't belong. It minds its own business. <laughs> now, here's where I have a problem today. And maybe you have this problem today, too. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> I don't even have to say much about that, do I? <laughs> you already know. It's hard to mind your own business on Facebook. People say outlandish things, and they post things that aren't true and they're not helpful and i want to respond and write them an epistle no no back off my wife is much smarter than me no no paul don't even bother to respond don't respond it's not going to help this is not the venue for that now if i was face to face with them i might have the conversation but on facebook it just doesn't work does it it's like this is just the continuing of going on and on. So you have to do this. You have to mind your own business. Mind your own business. I know sometimes people say some things that are untrue and outlandish and you want to respond. Maybe it's best you don't. Just mind your own business for a while. Gossips and busybodies are not loving. That's what we have to do. We're going to do this if we're going to love because love is kind and love is patient busybodies and gossips aren't patient with other people they're always trying to get into their lives and mess them up and instead of doing all this he says to them lead a quiet life mind your own business and work with your hands you know if you're busy working you're not going to be doing those other things. It's when your mind has a chance to wander in all these different things, and when you're busy with all that, then you start to do things that you shouldn't do. Then love doesn't express itself. Work with your hands. Do something. Now, as a pastor, I have to say sometimes the most enjoyable thing for me is something that I don't have to use my mind on. I don't mow my own lawn anymore. I, I have a service that does that. But I used to like that, really. 
you know, I'd get the lawnmower out. It was, a, it was an hour or so of just mindless work. You know, I could just do that. I could go back and forth and do that. It was good. I was working with my hands. We should do that. We should be people that work with our hands rather than doing these other things. Let your deeds of love speak louder than your words. Because what you do with your hands is often much more important to show that you love than what you say. So there's two consequences of living this kind of life. If we make it our ambition to lead a quiet life, if we make it our ambition to be, to mind our own business and to work with our hands, then we can expect these two, these two consequences. Obviously, the Apostle Paul told them this, and he practiced it among them. This is the first one. So your daily life may, be, may win the respect of outsiders. If you do those things, outsiders will observe, and they will respect you. If you don't do those things, they're going to observe, and you don't have anything to say because you're not living in love. This will earn respect with outsiders. I've heard this story in many different places, uh, but it's so true. There was a farmer who hired a man who was not a believer in Jesus Christ. And he worked as a hand on the farm. And he was invited always to come to the meal. And he would be at the meal. And he would see husband and wife and children interact. He would listen to them pray. He would hear them read the Bible. And he was there every day observing this family. And there came a time when he finally said to the farmer, what do you have that I don't have? What can you tell me? How can you live this life? You're so at peace. I want to know what you know. And he told them about Jesus Christ, and this man was converted to Jesus Christ. Not so much by what he said, but by what he and his family did. There's a woman uh, that I know of, and maybe you've heard of her. Her name is Rosaria Butterfield. She was a person who was living in sin. She was in a lesbian relationship and worked on Syracuse campus as a literature professor, and she was the champion for that type of life. A pastor sent her a letter one day inviting her to his house for dinner. She threw it away. But she decided she'd take it out of the garbage, looked at it and said, I'm going to go. Went to the pastor's house, had dinner with him for a whole year. A whole year. And during that year, the pastor just said, I, I want you to do one thing for me. This is all I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to read the Bible. So she did. And God spoke to her through the Bible and through that pastor and his wife. And she became a Christian. She denounced her sinful lifestyle and turned away. And Syracuse wasn't happy with her at that point because that was the end of her relationship there. But she realized, reading the Bible, that Jesus came to save sinners like her. You will have respect of outsiders if you live like this. You may not see the consequences immediately. It may take some time. It may take some very difficult work. But when we live in love and we act in love, God can use that to transform people. And he does. I heard Rosario speak at church in Holland, Michigan one time a few years back and she's a powerful witness for Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. 
So that's the first consequence. You will win the respect of outsiders. But you will not be dependent on anybody either. See, the problem we often have, even in this world, was that people became dependent on others. They weren't working with their hands. They weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And so they weren't demonstrating their love, and they became dependent. People who talk rather than work often become dependent. You know, I'd really like to have a job, people say. And I'm like, what? You'd really like to have a job? I, I, can, I can bring you to 30 places within five miles of here that are hiring people. Uh, you want a job? I can find you a job. You want to work? I can get you work. Oh, I don't like to do that kind of work. Or I don't want to do that. You know, there's excuses, right? But if you're living this right kind of life, this life of love, you will not become dependent. You'll become independent, and you'll be totally free as you should be. So there's those two consequences. You can win the respect of outsiders, and you can be independent. So in a few moments, we're going to come to this table to remember the ultimate act of love in Jesus Christ. And today I'm calling you to continue to love each other with a brotherly love. To love each other as you have been doing. To love each other with the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ as you give yourself for others. Because Jesus, Jesus loved us so much that he gave himself for us. And that is why we are now alive. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love of God in Jesus Christ. There is no greater love. There never will be greater love. And we thank you for that. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we go through life, we will be people who mind our own business, who live a quiet life, who work with our hands, who are kind and loving and patient and enduring as you do with us. So bless us as we come to the table in a moment. And bless us as we honor you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we have this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. There's an insult, in, insult. There's an insert. Yeah, you can laugh. I, that's a, <laughs> isn't it? That, that's, you know, see, this is, this is a good illustration of love. Because I'm not offended at all that you laughed. But I made a mistake. You know, it's fine. You know, it, it was a funny mistake even. It, you know, sometimes when you make a joke, it's not funny at all. But when you do something else, it's funny. So, but we have an insert, not an insult, an insert in our bulletins. And that's what we're going to use uh, for the Lord's table. So I'm going to ask the uh, elders who are going to serve to come up here now as we go through this so they'll be ready to do this when the time comes. And I'm going to go down there also so I'm close to everyone. There's places that you need to respond and even sing, so make sure you're ready for all of those things. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks. It is our joy and our peace at all times and in all places to give thanks to you, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Christ our Lord. Let's all sing together. Oh, did I have something? Okay, I'm going to say what's on the screen, because that's not on my sheet, but I'll say that. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and calling us to be your people. We thank you that you did not abandon us in our rebellion against your love, but sent prophets and teachers to lead us into the way of salvation. Above all, we thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to deliver us from the way of sin and death by the obedience of his life, by his suffering upon the cross, 
and by his resurrection from the dead. We praise you that he now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and out of every people unites us into one holy church. Therefore, with the whole company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy, and we sing with joy. We give thanks to God, the Father, that our Savior Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of this sacrifice until he comes again. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We shall do as our Lord commands. We proclaim that our Lord Jesus was sent by the Father into the world, that he took upon himself our flesh and blood and bore the wrath of God against our sin. We confess that he was condemned to die, that we might be pardoned, and suffer death, that we might live. We proclaim that he is risen to make us right with God and that he shall come again in the glory of his new creation. This we do now until he comes again. Heavenly Father, show forth among us the presence of your life-giving word and Holy Spirit to which to sanctify us and your whole church through this sacrament. Grant that all who share the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ may be one in him and may remain faithful in love and hope. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We all share in the The cup for which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. The cup which we drink is our participation in the blood of Christ.
Congregation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior and who desire to live in obedience to him, are now invited to come with gladness to the table of the Lord. Father, in thanks for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, in the joy of his resurrection, in the hope of his coming again, we present ourselves a living sacrifice and come to the table of our Lord. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins.
Take, drink, remember, and believe that the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. congregation in Christ. Since the Lord has fed us at his table, let us praise his holy name with thanksgiving. Praise, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. We're gonna to sing together in response, so give the Lord wholehearted praise. Please stand while we sing. the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.